A pleasant day to everyone. Today, we're going to talk about principles of ecology, organisms and their environment, with the following objectives. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe ecology and the work of ecologists. Identify the important aspects of an organism's environment. At any given point in your life, do you find yourself to be surrounded by nature? with all its beauty in the form of large trees, exotic plants, blue-green lakes, sounds of the flowing rivers, galloping animals, bustling bees, and many more. Do you think there is some form of contact or collaboration between the living and the non-living components of ecosystem? Let's define ecology. Ecology is the branch of biology that studies how organisms interact with their environment and other organisms. Every organism experiences complex relationships with other organisms of its species and organisms of different species. These complex interactions lead to different selective pressures on organisms. The pressures together lead to natural selection which cause population of species to evolve. Ecology is the study of these forces, what produces them, and the complex relationship between organisms and each other, and organisms and their non-living environment. Scientists can view ecology through a variety of different lenses, from the macroscopic, microscopic molecular level, all the way to the planet as a whole. Aspects of Ecological Study Let's talk about Biosphere. Biosphere is relatively thin life-supporting stratum of Earth's surface extending from a few kilometers into the atmosphere to the deep sea vent of the ocean. The biosphere is a global ecosystem composed of living organisms and their biotic factors from which they derive energy and nutrients. Scientists describe the Earth in terms of spheres. The solid surface layer of the Earth is the lithosphere. The atmosphere is the layer of air that stretches above the lithosphere. The Earth's water on the surface, in the ground, and in the air makes up the hydrosphere. What is ecosystem? Living organisms seem to interact amongst themselves and with the physical environment. This, in short, can be called an ecosystem. There can be different types of ecosystems. The biosphere, for example, can be a global ecosystem. It all depends on the different components and the extent to which you want to define this space to consider it as an ecosystem. There are different components of ecosystems. Living things are affected by two factors. The biotic components of ecosystem, the, there are two main components of an ecosystem which are in constant communication with each other. They are the biotic components and the abiotic components. Biotic components of ecosystem, whereas the living organisms or the living components of an ecosystem are called the biotic components. Some of these factors include plants, animals as well as fungi and bacteria. These biotic components can be further classified based on the energy requirement source. Producers, consumers, and decomposers are the three broad categories of biotic components. Producers are the plants in the ecosystem which can generate their own energy requirement through photosynthesis. In the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, all other living beings are dependent on plants for their energy requirements of food as well as oxygen. Consumers include herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. The herbivores are the living organisms that feed on plants. Carnivores eat only other living organisms. Omnivores are animals that can eat both plants and animal tissue. The composers are the fungi and bacteria which are the saprophytes. 
they feed on the decaying organic matter and convert this matter into nitrogen and carbon dioxide. The saprophytes play a vital role in recyc recycling the nutrients so that the producers, meaning plants, can use them once again. Abiotic Components of Ecosystem Abiotic components are the physical and or the chemical factor that act on the living organisms at any part of their life. They are also called as the ecological factors. The physical and chemical factors are characteristics of the environment. Light, air, soil, and nutrients from form the abiotic components of an ecosystem. The abiotic factor vary from ecosystem to ecosystem. In an aquatic ecosystem, the abiotic factors may include water pH, sunlight, turbidity, water depth, salinity, available nutrients, and dissolved oxygen. Similarly, abiotic factors in terrestrial ecosystem can include soil, soil types, temperature, rain, altitude, wind, nutrients, sunlight, and many more. Levels of Organization in Ecology These are the organisms, population, community, ecosystem, and biosphere. Let's start to discuss the first one, organisms. Organisms refers to any living thing from the smallest bacterium to the largest mammals in the world. It possesses the characteristics of life, namely, be made up of cell, contain DNA, grow and develop, reproduce, obtain and use energy, maintain homeostasis, and respond to stimuli. Population Population is a group of individuals of the same species occupying a common geographical area. Community Two or more populations of different species occupying the same geographical area of populations and communities include only biotic factors. Ecosystem Ecosystem is a community plus its abiotic factors like soil, rain, temperatures, and many more. Biosphere Biosphere is the portion of the earth that contains living species. It includes the atmosphere, oceans, soils, and the physical and biological cycles that affect them. Ecology of Community Community is defined as two or more population of different species occupying the same geographical area. Community ecology is the study of how different species interact within communities. In studying community ecology, we also talk about habitat. Habitat is the physical place where an organism lives, like for example a rotten log or a flowing river. Some organisms, particularly migratory birds, require more than one habitat. Niche Niche is the functional role of an organism in a community, its job or position. Each species has a potential niche, what they could do with no competitors or resource limitations. But due to competition and or resource limitation, most organisms occupy a realized niche or the part of the fundamental niche that a, that a species actually occupies in nature. Species interactions Neutral Two species that don't interact at all. Commensalism Beneficial to one species but neutral to another. Like for example, birds that nest in trees. Epiphytes, plants that grow on other plants, such as tropical orchids. Mutualism, an interaction that is beneficial to both species, like for example, plants and their pollinators. 
plants and animals that disperse their seeds, certain fungi, and plant roots. Another species interactions are parasitisms, an interaction that benefits one species and is detrimental to another. Note that the host is generally not killed. Predation, an interaction ben beneficial to one species and detrimental to another. In this case, the prey is killed. Predators are those that kill and eat other animals. Although many organisms eat plants, they usually don't kill them because they are a constant supply of food. Prey are killed and eaten. Competitive interactions Competition has negative effect on both organisms competing for a resource because resources are limited in nature. There will be always be competition for them. Competition is the driving force of evolution. Those that win leave more offspring. Types of competition Intraspecific A competition among individuals of the same species. Give an example, humans compete ag against other humans. Interspecific Competitions between different species. Give an example, humans compete against a wide variety of species seeking to utilize our food resources. The theory of competitive exclusion maintains that species who utilize the same resources cannot coexist indefinitely. The one niche, one species concept. Resource partitioning is the resource are divided, permitting species with similar requirements to use the same resources in different areas, ways, and or times. Again, these are the principles of ecology under the topic of organisms and their environment. I do hope we have met our objectives to describe ecology and the work of ecologists and identify the important aspects of an organism's environment. Thank you very much.